Welcome to Fegan and Finch, the podcast where we discuss everything football related. I'm Alex Finch. And I'm Ryan Fegan. Let's talk football. So on this week's podcast, we're doing it as a YouTube live this week. It's our 14th Ooh. podcast and there's only one topic we can deal with. And that is the messy transfer saga. And <laughs> what a transfer saga this is. It's certainly been messy. <laughs> Very messy. No <laughs> one was expecting it this summer. Or any summer, actually. No one's expecting this to happen with Messi at any point in his career. Everyone was thinking, OK, he's going to stay at Barcelona his whole career. That's the plan. Retire at Barcelona. Job yeah. done. But that hasn't been the case. And we're recording this on Friday. We're not recording it. We're putting it on YouTube Live. We're putting it on YouTube Live Friday evening after Messi made an announcement with goal. It's quite surprising that he was doing it with goal as well, just to give him exclusive rights of this of this announcement. But that's what happened. And the main point of that interview was that Messi said he wasn't happy, he wanted to leave, but I have not been allowed to leave this in any way and I will have to stay at the club and I don't want to go to the Liga route. That's what he said. So he's staying at Barcelona, it seems like, because he doesn't want to take that legal route, although no. he wants to leave. So... Yeah. After that, how, where do we start this? So, firstly, Ryan, I think we're going to have to deal with the subject. Do you think he'll definitely stay at Barcelona? Do you think that's the best thing for all parties if he does stay? Honestly, I don't think it is. Just be, from what he's just said there, where he's saying that he he has to stay just because he doesn't want to get into a legal dispute. It's like it's like Barcelona keeping this man, this club legend. You know, this guy has broken so many records for them put them back on the map, won them two trebles, you know, countless trophies. It, they're basically keeping him prisoner. And, you know, for, for someone of Lionel Messi's stature, the, you know, arguably the greatest player of all time, for him to come out and say that he's not happy with how the club's being managed, that he wants to leave, surely you just let him go. And you can get a, a lot of money for him and then do a complete rebuild of the squad. But I, I do see it from Barcelona's point of view that, Without Messi, there they could end up crumbling. Uh, you know, they could turn to the next AC Milan. But still, man, like a club legend like that, your best ever player. You know, you want to end it on not a high note because that last season wasn't the best. Real Madrid won the title. They got absolutely smashed in the Champions League. But still, it's still been an, a fantastic career for Messi at Barcelona. And you just want to end it sort of on a nice, on good terms, basically. You don't, because next year when he's allowed to leave for free, he'll never forget. You know, that will leave a bad taste in his mouth mm. of what, what Barcelona's like. There will yeah. be that club who gave him so many good memories, but then just, you know, they took all of that away when they didn't allow him to, to move on and do mm. better, and, better and greater things elsewhere. No, so, no I mm. don't think it's right, Finch. No, I completely agree, because... This podcast has taken a different turn. So we were originally going to talk about <laughs> where could Messi go? That was our original plan yesterday. Yeah. Where's Messi going to go? And now after that announcement, it seems like he's going to definitely stay. But like you, it's still worth talking about the subject. And like you, I completely agree that I don't think it's best for part, all parties. He's been at Barcelona for nearly 20 years, his whole professional career. And it, it just doesn't make any sense to me why they would keep him at a club where he's unhappy he's expressed that he's unhappy he's the greatest of a player to play for that team he's taken them yep. to the next level he's won countless trophies he's inspired probably the best team they've ever had during that Guardiola era and other eras several great teams probably the best the best team the second best team the third best team they ever had was during this <laughs> era and that's because, exactly. because of Messi and he's done so much for that club he's taken to so many levels they should respect Whatever decision he wants to make after after doing all that, he's an absolute club legend. He should have authority to take whatever yeah. next step he wants. Like you've seen at other clubs, you look, you saw it at Manchester United with Ronaldo. Maybe he didn't stay there as long, but he still did enough for Sir Alex to say, "Okay, you're unhappy. You want to go to that other club? We'll let you take that next step because that's what you want to do. You want to have that challenge." Look at Arsenal. Very similar situation will happen with Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry was with Arsenal for years and years and years. The greatest ever player, greatest goal scorer, won at yeah. all at Arsenal, but the Champions League. But he wanted one more challenge. He wanted to go to 
I say one more, I don't really count New York Red Bulls as a challenge. He wanted one big challenge to finish off his career. He wanted to go to Barcelona and win it all in a different league and win the Champions League, play with Messi, etc. And Arsenal let him go. They, because of what he did at Arsenal, they said, OK, it's your decision, we'll let you go. We're not even going to charge a big fee. I think it was 16 yeah. mil. He went to Yeah, something Barcelona. like that. I think it was 7, 16, 17. Yeah. And you look at what that did for the long-term relationship with Omri and Arsenal. Let, because the club respected his decision after all he did for the club, he's now still on great terms with Arsenal, still great ambassador for them. In fact, he came back on loan to Arsenal after New York, when he was at New York Red Bulls. Did a little bit there. And also, mm-hmm. it's been great in terms of his relationship with the club in the long run. So they still used in branding materials, still used an icon, still directs a lot of attention to that club. And it's all good. Good thoughts, good vibes with Omri and Arsenal. With Messi and Barcelona now, when he does leave, I think he will leave after all of this, Frank. Oh, yeah, awful, for sure. For sure. Awful stuff going on. He's not going to have that same relationship Omri does nope. at Arsenal. Every time Messi's associated with Barcelona, it'll be negative thoughts all about how mm-hmm. Barcelona are keeping him at the club, all about what Barcelona did almost. I don't want to say it, but it's basically keeping him a prisoner at the club, a prisoner at a place he doesn't want to be and not respecting what he wanted to do. He's, he's saying he literally wanted to leave Barcelona for a whole year. It's not just come about randomly. He's been telling yeah. the president he wants to leave for a year. And it's just not not a random conversation, not a random thought which has sparked up. Yeah, I want to leave one day. He's been thinking about this a long time, and the club should should respect that. After all he did for them, it's not it'd be different if he joined the club for two hundred mil, and a year later he wanted to leave. It'd be different. He's literally he came through the academy, mm-hmm. Barcelona bred almost. But although he's born in Argentina, he came through that academy. Was the proper Barcelona player going through that academy? And his whole family lived in Barcelona. His whole family was brought up in Barcelona. Yet, the club has got to a, a point in time now where he doesn't want to stay there. And you should just respect that decision. Respect that he wants something else. And Barcelona are making a mess of this by not doing that. But what, what, what's the... Yeah, what, what's, what's going to happen in next year? It's just going to be Messi doesn't want to be here the whole time. He might play, he'll still probably be the best player in the world. But... But is he still every, going to show that plays. same determination for for the club, you know, after mm. being told, right, you either play, uh, you know, you stay at our club or we'll take you to court, pretty much. Mm. And it's just sad that, so Messi, the crazy thing about this all is, Messi still has enough respect for the club not to go to court. That's the only reason he's not leaving, because yeah. he wants to leave, but he's literally just said, I'm going to stay because I don't want to take the club to court. That's the reason yeah. this is not... Well, it seems like it's not going to go any further in terms of the transfer this summer because Messi isn't prepared to take the club he still loves to court. And it's just sad that Messi is the one who still has respect in this relationship. I don't the think empathy, yeah, the empathy respect. in this situation. Mm. And Barcelona, and to, to be honest, treated we, like that. Mm. We just, I just talked about Henri and the long-term relationship he still has with Arsenal and remain that club legend. Mm. But obviously, Messi will be always a club legend, but Barcelona are thinking very short term here. They're thinking, we still want the best player in the world or whatever you call it, Ronaldo or Messi. They're one of them's the best. One of the best players in the world at our club. We want the pull of Messi to still be here for future recruitment. We want Messi yeah. here because he's going to help win us trophies. They're very fearful of the short term impact. But think about the long term. If Messi has a bad relationship with Barcelona, would he want to be around the club in the long term? Will he want to be an ambassador? Will he want to go into coaching at Barcelona? Will he want to put Barcelona in a positive light? No, he won't. He'll say negative no. things. Look at look at this statement. This statement is literally tore the club apart. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen anything like it either. Never. Hmm. And it's not a it's not an outspoken guy, is he either? So no. for this for him to do that. It's like that completely is unlike something. Messi. Messi is like one of the nicest guys sort of in you know in the football world and for him to say some of the some of the things he has done about the club that he loves it's it's just crazy it's absolutely crazy mm. it's it's sad to see that it's come to this so, no, to be honest no one was expecting this this is the crazy thing so rewind two weeks ago no one was expecting this to happen no, never any rumours you, with Ronaldo you got to quite often Ronaldo to Man United that kind of thing so it wasn't too much it was a little surprise him going to Venice but it wasn't too much of a surprise him leaving Real Madrid with Messi, 
no one saw this coming. No. So we, yeah, we were Barcelona. Gonna, mm, and to be honest, I was licking my lips at the prospect of him in the Premier League. I wouldn't Ooh, would really nice. care where he... This is probably the only player I can say this to. I would not mind where he went in the Premier League. As long as he was in the league, I'd be happy. Yeah. It's, well, it's Lionel Messi, as long as you got to see him. It's, mm. um, you know, make a, <laughs> imagine seeing Messi on match of the day. I know. And that would... <laughs> I mean, the Premier League dominates the world now, but imagine if Messi was there. Literally, La Liga would fall to pieces because... That yeah. is the There's no, their core Yeah, imagine point. what El Clasico would be like. No Lionel mm. Messi, no Cristiano Ronaldo. It would be, you know, Eden Hazard versus Marco Asensio or Vinicius. The Madrid derby would be, would be bigger, wouldn't it? Yeah. Madrid derby, would, I think, would definitely be bigger. Yeah. Barcelona, I, I, unless Barcelona, they start the rebuild now for Messi leaving next year because mm. no doubt Messi will leave next year. I can't really see it being this case of um, he signs a contract mid-season and there's something like astronomical happens like the president leaves uh, Barcelona, they get all new staff and they get Xavi as manager. I'm sure that will please him. Uh, you know, maybe you know, Iniesta is like backroom staff, coach or whatnot. Maybe do the other thing is we also got to remember is they would do all this stuff to, to to make Messi stay. You got to think how long will Messi carry on playing? Because mm. he is going to be thirty four years old next year. He's still yeah. going to be amazing. But how long can one keep up that performance, that level? You know. Mm. But do, do you think he will stay? So next year he obviously has that clause again. It seems like I think he has to invoke it by May. Where he can leave for a free transfer. Who knew about that clause as well? It's a weird clause that like he can literally leave for a free transfer for the end of May. And that was the sort of the sticking point in the legal battle. That clause, Messi thought it was still valid because the season, technically, in terms of UEFA terms, didn't finish until the end of August because the Champions League final was then. But then the actual clause just states that the end of May is the finish date because that's when usually the season does finish, but we're in some weird times. So it is. Mm. It is interesting that he does have that clause, but it's also on that. It's quite interesting because he said that he's been thinking about leaving the last 12 months. Why didn't he invoke yeah. that clause beforehand? That's, exactly. that's a little why, weird. Why, why didn't he do that? Mm. Well, and I, it makes me think... I can't... Yeah. It makes me think, because he did say the president's lied, that he said the president said he was going to let me go. It makes me think that maybe he talked to the president and they said like a £100 million fee would be acceptable and that's why he didn't use a clause to get out for free. Maybe they comes out some sort of like agreement like that, and the president like because it must it must have taken something big for Messi to come up with a statement. So it makes me think that there's a reason he didn't invoke it before, and maybe it was to do with the president saying he'd go for a set price, which wasn't large, and wasn't massive, but was enough for Barcelona to gain something out of the deal. Yeah, because you got to analyse why if he's been wanting to leave for a year and he has a clause which expires end of May each year and he can't invoke it till so maybe I think it's only in May he can invoke it why would he not have invoked it at that point maybe it's because they're playing the Champions League still and maybe maybe he, went, maybe he uh, had an yeah. agreement with someone there and they promised him they promised him that yeah we'll we'll let you go um, as you wish and now it's no maybe that's why he's so mm. hurt about it all I think that is I think they did tell him I think they probably said okay you got this clause but Please don't invoke at the moment because we're still in the Champions League. We've still got the league going on because of COVID. Yep. But we'll let you go as soon as it's all over. That's, I think it needs something like that to happen for Messi to come out like he has. I think that's the reason. I think it will I think, all... I think more yeah. stuff's going to come out in the next few weeks. I think so as well. Like I reckon probably we'll hear from both sides of the party. And if we do mm. hear from both sides of the party, if when we hear about the BAFTA board, either, you know, maybe not bad mouthing. Messi in the media, but basically saying, like, no, that's not true. I think that's when things can really start getting ugly, like, in the dressing mm. room, because, obviously, you know, it's Lionel Messi. He's the biggest player at that club. As soon as, if you lose Lionel Messi in the dressing room, you have all these sort of players going on strikes, etc. It will just be mm. absolute shambles at Barcelona. Yeah, we're just... It will not be pretty. Yeah. I've never seen a player come out like this. There's always, like, rumours of players, of big players want to leave. I remember there was 
probably the most recent history. There's loads, loads and loads of rumours of Pogba wanting to leave Man United and almost every interview he was asked, do you want to leave? And he never said, I want to leave. He's like saying, oh, no, I look at every, every possible outcome or analyse at the end of the season what I can do. But like, he never said that. And people made a massive thing out of this. Made a massive thing yeah. out of Pogba. He was the poster boy for all the media outlets for quite a period of time during that. It was when Mourinho was there at United. Definitely. But nothing's happened like this. Nothing's happened where someone said, I want to go and I'm literally just not leaving because the president won't let me. And it makes me think that although they, things might change in the next year, they may, because they have this presidential race, they may get a new president in who, on his manifesto, is saying, I'll get Chavi as the manager. Obviously, they've yeah. still got Koeman. He's got a two-year contract. So how will that happen? Is it a two-year contract? I thought it was a one-year yeah, contract. Two-year contract. Two year contract, but there might be a clause in there, which I think they probably they could, They're allowed to sack him they next can break year. It. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, that's yeah. it. I probably, I probably it's just very, it actually go disgusting with... in itself. Like, mm. surely Kruger must know about this clause. Mm. They must, he must mm. know. Yeah, and it just makes me think maybe Chavi coming in will will make Messi think twice. But I don't personally. I don't think he will. I think Messi's. I think it's too far over I the line now. I think his heart is more. sort of set on yeah. now leaving, especially after all this. Like, mm. I don't think there's not really a lot coming back. Like I say, like we said, unless. It's like a big sort of overthrow mm. of presidency. You bring in Xavi, Iniesta as backroom staff. Mm. Um, you know, you bring Eric Abidal back in because he got the sack. You look at Pure, you know, even cater to him. him. Yeah. You cater to him, yeah. I think, it, yeah, the big thing as well with this is you've got to look at who's on whose side. And you see legends like Pure backing Messi in this saga. Pio is Barcelona through and through his whole career. Yep. He probably still has some association with him, maybe in an ambassadorial role. He's, his whole career, Barcelona. And mm. if he's backing Messi in this, then that shows there's something wrong on the Barcelona side. Surely. There's something rotten in that dress, in mm. that, in that yeah. board. Because Pio in any right mind would never want Messi to leave his club. No. So there must be something going on there. And actually... I think, in terms of what's going to happen next year, I think before we analyse, maybe we can analyse why Messi wants to leave and Barcelona's downfall. But before that, I reckon we should look at where, where's he going to go next year if he does go. It, there could be another turn this summer. Maybe he'll go again. He'll go this summer. We've got a month left. Maybe someone breaks that seven hundred million, you know, uh, transfer clause. Maybe someone hmm. buys them out. Yeah, I, that, I personally can't see it, yeah. but never say never. Yeah. Well, he looked like. If, there's rumours, wasn't there? I mean, this is the closest Messi I think has ever gone to leaving. So maybe it was 10 years ago when Anzi, was it Makala Carlo? I think that was how you pronounce it. They, Anzi Makala Carlo. Yeah, Makala yeah. Carlo. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. There's rumours they met Messi's old clause, wasn't there? When they were like, gone on massive oh. spinners with Eto. That's the closest. Eto, paid, that was, yeah. Eto was like the highest paid player ever at that point. He was on like 330 yeah. grand a week. Yeah. And there could be a random club come out in China which, which pays that fee yeah, or somewhere around the world. You, you just don't know. Qatar, Chavi could bring Messi to Qatar. You don't know, but... Uh, you don't. Yeah. Man City seemed like they were the front runners and if Messi is going to leave, they probably still would be the front runners because, one, they can pay Messi the money. I don't think he'll be able to get a million a week anywhere in terms of the top leagues like he has now. I think Barcelona... Mm-hmm probably wrong to give him that wage. I think he's the highest paid player in the world with that. Yeah. But what Man City can give him is still a significant wage and still more than any other club outside of Real Madrid, I'd say. Yeah. Because the Premier League money coming in and Man City obviously having rich owners and it seems like they can pull a few strings with UEFA based on what's happening in their court <laughs> case. But secondly, the big thing, and thirdly, so secondly, the big thing is Guardiola. Messi, yeah. best period he ever had in his career. was arguable, but most people say his best period was under Guardiola. Maybe that's down to his peak, but it's probably down to how Barcelona and Lona Goal played that in terms, point. definitely yeah. under Guardiola. Yeah, yeah. And him and Guardiola were perfect for each other during that period. And he still gets on amazing Guardiola. I'm sure they have a great relationship, but he's still a pull for Messi. So that way of playing at Man City is associated with Guardiola, and Messi will want to play him that style of football. So that's a massive pull. And then the third thing is an outcome of Guardiola, an outcome of Guardiola's play. Man City are a team competing for the Champions League and the league. Barcelona 
aren't a team really, which I think are going to compete for the Champions League over the next two years. So he'll want to go to a team. Well, he even said in a statement he wants to go to a team which can compete for the Champions League. He doesn't want to repeat of what happened in Lisbon, what happened in Rome, what happened in Liverpool across the last three years with them going out the Champions League in awful fashion each year. This year, obviously, the Bayern score in Lisbon. Previous years in yep. crazy circumstances, not big scores, but oh, the, the, the Liverpool front, yeah, uh, the, the scores, the results, the games are just absolutely crazy. It just Barca are bottling it. So I still think Man City are the front runners for, for those three reasons in terms of money, Guardiola, and competing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think Man City would definitely be the favourites. Um, what would be absolutely brilliant and would just absolutely, you know, the football world would erupt if this happened. Mm. If after all of this, you know, after the, all the mistreatment to Lionel, of Lionel Messi from Barcelona, he gives them the ultimate middle finger and joins Real Madrid on a free <laughs> transfer. Could you imagine it? Wow. Wow, that that's what I be, can say. <laughs> that would be incredible, Whoa. wouldn't it? Whoa, imagine that. that, that It'd be very, go, very unlikely, mental. but that would just be the biggest sort of turn ever. That'd be like, mm, do, everyone calls Luis Figo a traitor. Mm, I don't mm. know what they'd do to Lionel Messi. <laughs> to be honest, I love to see that. And to be fair, there's quite a few people you would like to see. You see, Messi's sponsored by Adidas. Adidas yeah. sponsor around Madrid. I'm sure they'd help sort that deal I'm out sure somehow. Well. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, and if they want a bit of advice, and we can help you because we started this off. <laughs> Ryan got the rumor going. Ryan got Real Madrid's thinking going. And to be fair, <laughs> and to, to be fair to La Liga, La Liga yeah. need to keep Messi. They need they that do. start. They got Hazard, but Hazard's he's not really the pull. He's a great, amazing player, world class player, but he's not a pull in terms of a media profile. No. They need nope pull. And they, at the like moment, Syria, they've got Ronaldo, they got? Bundesliga, have got like Lewandowski, Sancho. Mm. Uh, La Liga, I mean, Premier League's got, <laughs> Rose, yeah. they've got a crap ton of stars. And then mm. you've got La Liga with Hazard. I wouldn't even say Gareth Bale anymore. Griezmann, no, is some... he even on that level anymore? Who next? Mm. Coutinho? And Fati, yeah, maybe, but... It, who's there with the profile in, in that league? Who has the, the only people in that, in that league who have profiles are the managers in Simeone and Zidane. And that's literally, yeah. well, I guess there's a lot of good players in that league, but do they have the profiles of other leagues? Like, even you could even argue, actually, it's probably easy to argue that League, league One in France, League One, has bigger profile players in terms of the actual yeah, standards. Neymar and, and Neymar and Yeah, Neymar and Mbappe. Like, La Liga need Neymar back in that league. They need Messi in that league for the pool. Like, who else is going to want to watch La Liga now? I know avid football fans will. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the casuals, not the avid football fans. The avid football There's fans will carry on watching yeah, La Liga. Yeah, there's not really much sort of reason to. They haven't got too big of a start anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy saying that even the French league has bigger, well, I say bigger stars, it has, like we say, more high profile players. Yeah. And I guess there's, in my head, there's two other possible options. And I did say I was wrong when I said before, I was saying Man City outside of Real Madrid, the only team that could properly give Messi that financial package. There's obviously PSG as well, which I completely yeah. ignored, which I shouldn't have there. So PSG could, there's other clubs which technically could like United and stuff like that, but I think their priorities is elsewhere. So that's why I said they probably wouldn't offer that package. And there's, there's other clubs which I'm sure are, have rich owners and could do it, but financial fair play would impact them. So I think PSG are an option, but I just don't think Messi would ever consider them because they're not the type of team I think he sees him. He sees himself as having another challenge at and not a team no. where he can go into that team and it's think, not oh, really I'm going really to yeah, I'm gonna push them to win the title. With Man City, it's going to be a challenge in England winning yeah. a title. I think that's what, what he wants. He wants a big challenge. He doesn't want to go to a team. Take, that's well, take the Man title. City to win the Champions League finally. Yeah. And that, that's, oh, hell, that's man. why. Get, yeah, come that's, to Chelsea and give us another Champions League. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's why I think he'll Man City and Giants. And the other option I was thinking of, which I think is probably more plausible than and more possible than PSG, but I just don't, I just don't think it will happen. I think Man City is, is, is are in the driving seat because they're probably the only real possible 
plausible team which can fulfill Messi's wishes and also offer the best financial package. So the other team and you I'm get talking that about really is Juventus. Pep. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other team I'm talking about there is Juventus. Because imagine yeah. Messi going to Juventus and playing with Ronaldo. Oh my and god. Oh my god. Well. Jesus Christ, oh. man. That is just the ultimate dream mm. for any football fan is Messi yeah. and Ronaldo playing together. Mm. Oh, I just would not start watching Juventus if that happened. Like nope. you would watch every single game because when oh, would you ever see the top two players, not just top two players in the world, the moment, top two players in history playing the same team? When would you see that? Like if Messi was the only time really, you really can see him, that is in FIFA. Oh yeah, <laughs> FIFA career mode. That yep. is literally, that is literally yeah. the only place you can see that. You can't see it anywhere else, and that would just that would also break the footballing world if mm. Ronaldo and Messi teamed up. Yeah, I guess the reason I don't think that's possible, I think Messi, he might be open to it if it was possible, but I don't think it'd be possible because Juventus wouldn't be able to offer both Messi and Ronaldo those financial packages because it seems like Juventus, they're paying crazy wages. They must have one of the biggest wage bills in the whole of Europe if they're paying on Ramsey 400k. Ramsey's the highest earning British player in the world. They're paying him 400k. I I I just can't see Juventus being able to offer Messi that financial package. And also, although I guess it would be absolutely incredible to see Messi and Ronaldo in one team, would Messi want to go again to, to a league where he's almost guaranteed the title? Yeah. That's not, yeah, that's not a good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then again, so where if Messi went to City, where where would he fit in? So you have, a, uh, there's one thing we didn't actually mention as well. So not just Guardiola, he has Aguero. Aguero is his childhood friend. Oh, that's, his best fr- that's his best friend, yeah. Yeah, isn't... Messi is like, well, um, I, his is godfather. Is godfather? Yeah, godfather. Yeah. Aguero's son. So, yeah. I guess the person you might lose out if Messi went to see, I guess, yeah, if someone's going to lose out, you wouldn't really mind if you bring in, bring a Messi to town. It's probably Phil Foden. Jesus. Phil Foden is, is, was literally meant to be David Silva's successor, have that position. He's impressing. Yeah. He probably would have to sort of take take a little spot on the bench for Messi to go on I'm the team. I'm sure he, he wouldn't mind yeah. sitting on the bench and watching Lionel Messi play. Mm. You would, yeah, you would fit him in. learning from Lionel Messi, having Lionel Messi in training and dressing room, he'd be so... It'd just be such a, a great presence at the club, for any club. Mm. Definitely. That's why I just want to see him in the Premier League. Just imagine seeing Messi in the Premier League. We've watched him for years and years in Barcelona and watched him mainly in, in the Champions League, for me anyway. I've obviously watched a lot of La Liga, but I yep. mainly see him in the Champions League when Barcelona play in that competition. Yep. So for him to come to the Premier League and watch him a match of the day would absolutely be incredible. And to be honest, I still see Man City as a little bit inferior with their fan base compared to United. Chelsea, oh, Liverpool. Mate, without a doubt. Yeah. A doubt. And I do City think got that fan yeah. base like like the big Not other big six have. Not even mm. really, and, honestly. I think Spurs probably even have a bigger fan base. No, 100 percent Spurs definitely have a bigger fan base. Okay, a lot yeah. they have a lot of the South, don't they? So Spurs, yeah. Arsenal, Liverpool, City, Newcastle, even, United, yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, I said Liverpool twice there. But Right, the worldwide sort of fan base yeah. as well, not just in England, yeah, just, just worldwide. Yeah. yeah, worldwide completely. They, those teams we just mentioned all have bigger fan bases worldwide completely, and that's why yeah. I think Messi would put them in that bracket. They gain so many fans around the world. Messi oh, has well, Messi has a, has a huge yeah. following. Yeah, yeah. it's second very biggest, few players. The second biggest following in in football to so Ronaldo. Definitely. Definitely, yeah, Ronaldo has the biggest following, but Definitely, Messi yeah. is. I'd, I'd argue Messi is the, the better player, obviously, but yeah. you don't I mean, just get his ability. Remarkable. You get also yeah. all the all the fans that, that he has. I'm sure yeah. a lot of Barcelona yeah. fans would end up switching. Yeah, well, well that's that's the thing. Is obviously, loads of footballers have their own fan bases, but no footballers have their own fan bases like Messi or Ronaldo. Like, Messi and Ronaldo fans would would literally support the player whatever team they're at. So if they're Bar- yeah. their Barcelona supported now because of Messi, they'll move to, they'll move to City because there's certain fans who literally are fans of the player, not the team. And it's been quite a few Ronaldo fans who've literally just moved to Juventus because that's where Ronaldo is. And these fans are not yep. like me and you. 
They didn't support one team. They're, they're casuals. There's a lot of casual fans about who just, exactly. just go team to team based on a player. And they're, they're Messi and Ronaldo fans. And we said before about sort of Messi and Ronaldo being these two stars and having their fan bases. Ronaldo is the most followed person on Instagram. So that's in the whole world, not just in football. And Messi is mm-hmm. probably not far behind. He's not as marketable, but he's still right up there. Over 150 million followers, which is quite a bit. Mm. Yeah. So if it has any team in the world got that in terms of a single club? Probably not. He's, he's, yeah. That's what I mean. He's, it's, it's Ronaldo and Messi are probably the two players in the world who are bigger than any club in the world. Yeah. That's why yeah, this is all a bit weird. Like Barcelona taking on Messi. You're taking on the best player ever. Are you going to win in the long run? No. Probably not. Oh uh, yeah, I, I but people can't see yeah. a win out of it. I cannot see a win out of it unless they start the re. Honestly, they should have just accepted whatever bid of it. Like, if they would have said, right, Messi's open to bids this summer. If you can match his release release calls, that's fine. But please mm. bid sensibly, you know. And I'm sure there have been some clubs who generally would have bid three hundred million plus for Lionel Messi services. You get some, uh, you know an amount like 400 million and you think, right, okay, we'll take that. And then we will reinvest that 400 million into the squad. <laughs> Where would they reinvest though? They reinvest in number two Dembele's. <laughs> then, yeah. I, firstly, you've got to sack your, your transfer scouts and then you hire a couple more and then you reinvest smartly. You spend 200 million on, say, Mbappe. You spend 100 million on Van Dyke. And you spend the other hundred million on, I don't Will know. Will Keane. <laughs> no, Will Keane can go to hell, man. He is not <laughs> going anywhere near Barcelona. I'd say maybe even try and bring back Neymar, Mo Salah, you know. Get Thiago. Bring Thiago yeah, back. Thiago, bring Thiago back. Try, try your arm, mm. you know, Jaden Sancho. Imagine Jaden Sancho mm. and Mbappe. Two mm. world class generational talents that will be mm. at the, that can stay at Barcelona for, for a long time, at least 10 years of their career. Mm. Well, that's, that would have been the sensible move to literally say we're open yeah. to bids. I'm sure that's what Real Madrid and Ronaldo did. They literally came yeah. to an agreement. They probably thought, okay, it's best in our relationship here. That ended a bit more perfectly with Madrid winning the Champions League, but still, there was a fair agreement there. Madrid got a fair price. Ronaldo was Messi's age when he went to Juventus and they got, I think it was just over 100 mil, 105 mil. And even if, yeah, yeah, even if, and that was all done behind closed doors, they came to that agreement. So even if that happened with Messi, that a club bid at 105 mil, it's better than nothing. It's still a significant amount to reinvest. And Mm -hmm. Madrid were able to buy a hazard with that money. So well, Hazard yeah. and Rodrigo, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, so it does make sense if Barcelona want to rebuild, they well, need to get parties, money. Finch. It's best, yeah, it's best for all parties. It, it doesn't leave Messi with a bad taste in his mouth and you can mm. rebuild for the future. Yeah, because you look at Barcelona, they've obviously got massive income streams from their branding and people buying their shirts and that kind of thing, club tours. But they've lost a huge income stream in their, their attendances and their fan base going to games. And the actual money you get from fans paying on the door, like that, that's a bigger income stream for clubs in La Liga compared to the Premier League, where the biggest income stream by far is the TV rights. So Premier League clubs are less affected by fans not attending games. La Liga clubs like Barcelona, who get 90,000 fans every game are going to be more affected because that is a bigger portion of their income because That's the TV rights aren't as big. Fee. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're losing that yeah. one. So how, now Barcelona are in a position where they've got an Asian squad, they're letting players like Suarez will come on to later on about almost their demise Barcelona and why they're letting these players go for free. They're letting Rakitic go for 1.5 mil. They need to get money from somewhere to rebuild. They need money. So where yeah. else are they going to get the money? It's, it's, where? Yeah, I, yeah. Where, where it, else? It's a tough one because 
they've been so stupid with money, like with the Griezmann mm. buy, the Coutinho buy, the Dembele buy, all seem like good deals at the time, but they just haven't worked mm. out well. There's not really a lot of resale value on those players at this moment in time, especially with, you know, how COVID has hit the transfer market. But even with COVID hitting the transfer market, they're still acting dumb. They're still selling Arthur mm. and buying Pjanic. What, what mm. sense does that make? What sense does this make? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. They're letting Rakitic go for, what was it, 1.5 mil? Yeah, 1.5 mil sphere. And this is, so I think it's worth talking about now. So, yeah, we talked about Messi, talked about what's happening with the saga, talked about that he'll probably stay this summer, but next summer is still going to be a bit of taste there and we think he'll go to Man City. But we've got to talk about why he wants to leave Barcelona. What has Barcelona been doing in the last few years to make Messi leave? Make a player who had his heart set on staying at that club for his whole career. Why does he want to leave? And like you said, probably the main reason is to do the president and with the president, the recruitment. So mm-hmm. that recruitment has been awful right from the, the, I guess, the starting point for me with the recruitment is where Xavi and Iniesta retired and they weren't yeah. replaced properly. And at that point, you had Xavi and Iniesta going and you also had Neymar leaving for 200 mil and that was a right old mess. And yeah. in the end, Barcelona bought in that period to replace Neymar, Xavi, Iniesta and co. They brought in Coutinho, they brought in Malcolm, they brought in Paulinho, they brought in De Feu, they brought in Kevin prince Boating, and most recently they brought in Brathwaite. Has any of those players made a significant impact? No, not one. Did Malcolm mm. even play more than 10 games? How much? I don't think he did any cost nearly 40 mil and literally that was the weird that was another weird one he was going to go to Roma and then literally on the yeah. day it seemed like it had a flight to Roma and then on the day he turned back went to Barcelona what what was that all about Barcelona just buying players last minute and these players we talked about they're not just like 20 mil here and there that's come to a total of nearly 400 mil, million I think so Coutinho 140 yeah. uh, you got Dembele 110 you got Malcolm, 40. you got Paulinho, 40. you got, okay, maybe not 400, but you're talking about just over 300 million at least. That's a lot of And not money. one significant signing. Not one. Hmm. And obviously and Griezmann as well. Players, don't even play yeah. for the club anymore. It's only Griezmann and Dembele who have, well, not even Dembele. Dembele has been out injured. It's really only Griezmann hmm. who sort of stuck around in that, in that squad and, you know, but he hasn't done much. He's not done really anything recently. No. Not I need, like he's done million. Good days. Yeah, I didn't even mention because so I didn't mention him in that list of players because his one has a little impact, but not a significant impact. So if you include him as well, then we're above 400 mil in terms of players. Yeah. And Griezmann, again, he was 28, I think, when he moved to Barcelona. Significant age. It doesn't really go with a good recruitment strategy. It doesn't make sense. And we said before, Barcelona's recruitment has just been odd. There's been no plan. I'm sure this is why Messi wants to go because there is no long-term plan here. Because there is no future, rad- really. Yeah. Yeah. There's no project. There's nothing. Mm. They just well, it seems that like they're just putting players together to to try and build a short-term team to try and win something in the short short run. Like getting Pjanic, who's 30 years old, and letting Arthur go the other way, who's 24 years old. He's 20, just yeah, trying 24 to, yeah. years old. Yeah, they're trying to think in the short term. Then there's some odd things happening, like last year when they let Sillison go and brought in Nito from Valencia and was a swap deal. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And then nope. there's stuff going on with their academy. They, their academy has been one of the best academies in Europe over the last 25 years. But the last five years, this is one of the things Messi said. They haven't brought through the youth players. They haven't carried on the, the strong culture of Barca and La Masaya where they bring through the youth, they bring through these successful players, and that's the cornerstone of Barcelona, where they had Pio, they had Xavi, they had Iniesta, they had Busquets, they had Messi, all from that academy. Last few years, they have talents like Pug and Carcelina, haven't played. Nope. And that's a big thing. So they haven't played, and they've maybe it's also that to do with Barcelona not giving coaches time. You saw Enrique have... Great spell at Barca, but then weirdly, don't really know what happened. But the club, they just didn't extend his contract. So he, he just left. And I don't know if it was his decision or the club's decision. 
he left, Valverde came in, three years in the job. He was sacked. Then you had Setien coming this year. He was only in the club from January to August. He was let go. And then you've got Koeman now. Who's going to be sacked next year? Hmm. Yeah. So what 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 do Barcelona? What do you think Barcelona need to do now? Because you, you see them also making more mistakes. With this is probably one of the reasons why Messi wants to go. It is one of the reasons that they're patronising and yeah, letting go of these big names who have been legends at Barcelona, like Suarez. They're saying you can go. We don't. You're yeah, not untouched. Letting him go. He's an absolute legend. They're saying they said PK's on the market. They said Busquets is on the market. They've let Rakitic go. This is ridiculous. They, like when Suarez should when, when Suarez leaves Barcelona, it should be firstly his decision, and also mm-hmm. Barcelona should do a massive thing about him leaving, saying absolutely amazing player. We want to be thank you. We shouldn't. They shouldn't be forcing him out. That's not how to do it. No. They should like terminate what, his contract. Mm, they should be doing what, like for example, what happened with Drogba at Chelsea it was a good leave. What happened with yep. Silva most recently at City? Amazingly, yep. he just left in good terms. He's going to get a stature at City. Left well. They shouldn't be doing what's like having rumours like this saying he can leave for free, terminate his contract. It's awful. What do what do Barca do? So they, you know, I, I personally, what I think should happen about they need to sit down and they need to come up with this this project for Barcelona that will put them back in the, the European sort of like Champions League fight, like a fight and for Champions League. Because even now they're struggling for, for La Liga. I don't, I can't see them winning La Liga next year. I think that'll be Real Madrid all over again. Mm. They, they need to look at their squad and they need to act on it quick. They need to, they need to realise that Lionel Messi is more than like 90% going to leave Next year, they need to think, right, we need to come up with a plan. We need to spend wisely in the transfer market in the summer, in the January, and also in the summer again when Lionel Messi goes. We need to start looking for targets. Who can be that Lionel Messi replacement? Like I've always said Bernardo Silva dribbles just like Lionel Messi. Obviously, he's not Lionel Messi like level. No one is, okay? But mm. Bernardo Silva, I think, could be the closest Thing in the Lionel Messi dribbling sort of aspect, you got you can either you can promote you know Ansu Fati to be this new poster boy for Barcelona. You can re you can have sort of a resurgence for Usman Dembele, Philip Coutinho, even Griezmann. You know, give them more of a starring role and let Messi sort of just simmer out into the into the sunset. Um, or you 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 know you break the bank and you say to the to the owners give me the fund and I will bring Neymar back I will bring Mbappe along with him I will hire I will get Pep Guardiola to come back hmm. you know you need you need you can't just have managers come in on one year deals it's never hmm. going to work it's never going to hmm. work because every manager has their own sort of tactics their own philosophies and their own transfer targets. What's Kuman gonna yeah. do? Right, what's Kuman's right, Kuman said that he wants the pie and which now them to Wijnaldum. come. Yeah, which which now them to come. And what's gonna happen next year when the manager's gone, Kuman's gone, yet Shari come in and he goes, actually no, I don't want Wijnaldum. I don't want the pie. Get him out. You're gonna lose money. It makes no sense whatsoever to just hire a manager for a year. No. Not at all. And unless, I think, unless you have uh, a plan, unless you have a plan, hmm. yeah. <laughs> plan to win all the trophies in one year and leave. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I personally think that what Barcelona should do is stick with their traditional philosophy. This reminds me a lot of what happened with United after Sir Alex left. In the whole project, we almost crumbled down. So it relied on Sir Alex, and at the moment, it seems like Barcelona are relying on Messi. And Maynard went completely against their philosophy and long-term principles when Sir Alex left. They tried to sign big names, where they did sign big names for big money randomly. It seems like what Barcelona have been doing in recent years. So big names for big money, 
and they didn't really fit the club strategy, didn't fit a specific plan, didn't fit a specific manager's strategy. They brought Di Maria, they brought Sanchez, they brought a lot of players like that who were big names at the time. Ibra came in, I was, Ibra was fairly successful, but they brought a lot of big names. And it just didn't work out. So that's what I'm thinking of Barcelona. They buy Mbappe for the sake of it, just buying a big name. Will it work out? I'm thinking Barcelona should go back, like you said, have a plan, go back to their philosophy. And their philosophy yeah. with Barcelona is tiki taka and using the academy as the cornerstone of their team, bringing through players in that academy, making that the cornerstone and bringing through a team, whether that be for the academy or external to the academy, in buying players who can play the tiki taka style, play a good style of football to win games. So that is the philosophy. A good style of football, but having an academy as a cornerstone. And I need to make sure that that philosophy is brought back because at the moment you look at the team and there's not those young standouts coming through. They have Fatty, Ansu coming through, Ansu Fatty coming through. And yep. he needs to get, be given the playing time. He needs to be a cornerstone of that team to inspire the next yeah. generation of players. Because in my opinion, that, that's what they need to do. So they need to build that team again, like they did in the early 2000s, of youngsters from the academy, supplemented by experience where needed, and get that playing style. Rijkaard got it going originally with Barcelona, with the likes of Xavi. He, he introduced Iniesta. He obviously had Ronaldinho for that, that flair, and obviously Pure at the back. So players from the academy, and then the flair from Ronaldinho, who wasn't too expensive at the time. But he had that experience and also he had other experienced players like Gilly in that team and, and Co. and Rafael Marquez. And then Guardiola yeah. carried it on, bringing through more youth players such as Biscuits, Pedro. Messi is brought through by Rygaard a bit, but he's probably starred under... He developed him. Yeah, under Guardiola. They brought back PK. So they didn't spend huge money on these players, but they made the academy a cornerstone, supplemented by certain experienced players who weren't big names like Rafael Marquez and Gilly and those kind of players. So that's what I need to go back to, in my opinion, going back to their philosophy. And that's... Back to their in my, Yeah, that's how other clubs have been successful in recent years who, have, who went through long periods of no success. Like Liverpool, look what they did for years. They had long periods of no success. Then they went back to their philosophy with Klopp. I so there's one thing going back to philosophy about how you want to play, how you want to have the team structure with the academy. But you've got to have a manager who suits that. And the manager is the centre point of that all. Rijkaard was for Barcelona. Then Guardiola was. That's what was successful. Liverpool went to Klopp, knew their, their philosophy is all about passionate football, passionate fans, all about the passion in that high intensity. That is their philosophy. That was Klopp's philosophy as well. And then them two together, they identify what positions they need to make Liverpool successful. They utilise youth with Trent, they bought positions that they thought suited that playing style, suited the passionate football, like like mm -hmm. Salah, like Mane. They weren't necessarily big Salah names, but they built that team. Then they identified players or positions where they're a weak in goalkeeper with Allison, so it's targeted recruitment. And obviously sent it back with Van Dijk. And then you see what happened to Liverpool. They they literally regained their spot as one of the best teams in world football with the Champions League, the Premier League. And then again, you see what's happening with Chelsea at the moment. You see that they identified how they want to, their philosophy slightly changed, it seems. And they, they've got a new philosophy with, they want youth to be a centre point of their strategy and young yeah. players who are resellable. So literally, at this, they identified a manager, Lampard, a Chelsea legend who will epitomise that strategy. He knows Chelsea's youth setup, knows the best players. He's come in, he's literally epitomised their philosophy in bringing through youth playing an attractive style of football, whilst also identifying positions which they're less strong. So very targeted, very targeted recruitment and getting it done behind closed doors with, again, it's, they're, they're, slight, they're big fees, but they're not compared to what Barcelona were doing with Griezmann and Dembele. It's 40 million on, or 35 million on ZX, 45 mil on Chilwell, I say Werner. 70 mil on. Yeah, Werner, 45 mil. It's very targeted recruitment but again recruitment yeah. of players who are young not like Griezmann who's 28 exactly players who have resale exactly. value and that suits Chelsea's overall philosophy supplementing those targeted that targeted recruitment for positions they're weak on so positions which they academy structure and current team 
don't provide, but making sure that the academy is a centre point of that with the likes of Tamori, with Mount, with Gilmore, with hudson Adoy, making sure that is still a centre point, but supplemented by targeted recruitment for that philosophy. And Barcelona... Just being smart. Do not have Just that. being smart in the market. Mm. Yeah, and that's, that's, I'm sure Chelsea will be really successful over the coming years because of that strong philosophy and yeah. backing that up with a strong plan. And that's why Liverpool have been successful recently. So Barcelona need to have that and follow those models from Liverpool and Chelsea in recent years in having, well, basically going back to that philosophy and having the plan of the academy and recruitment along with that, a very targeted plan. Yeah, I, can, I completely agree with you. It's going to be... It's going to be a very interesting sort of turn of events at Barcelona, I believe. I uh, I don't I don't think it'll be a quick process. Like I feel like they may go a couple of years if they don't win La Liga. But, but the thing, what they need to do in that time they don't win La Liga, they build. They keep building on this amazing team, like for the youth, sort of smart buys in the transfer market, and they get back to where they should be you know, being the biggest team in the planet. Mm, definitely. And you don't necessarily need to... I think Barcelona, that's, they, they're falling down the United trap again. They think we need to make big signings to yeah. replace players going. They, they don't need to do that. You need to make targeted recruitment. You see what yep. United did with, like, Di Maria Sanchez. That didn't work out, but now United have a recruitment. Yeah. At time, none of those big signings they made really worked out. Every now and again, you got on which did, but that didn't really work for United in that strategy. And I don't think it worked for Barcelona. Well, it hasn't. The big name signings, Griezmann, Dembele, haven't worked out for them. Nope. Even Coutinho, big, big money, hasn't worked out. They need to go back to a plan and a philosophy and stick to that with their recruitment. And that's what will work out. That's what clubs like Chelsea and Liverpool have been so successful in doing with, with their recruitment. They spend big times, but it's very targeted. And always, it seems like with Liverpool and Chelsea at the moment, it's always young players. So they'll have resale. Like even looking at a player like Kepper at the moment, he was massive money, but he's so young that he'll have resale yeah. value. That's Whereas you look at, yeah. compare that to a player like Sanchez when United got him. Mm-hmm. They got for, although they got him for free, it was massive wages. Four hundred grand no, a week. Yeah, he, he basically had no retail rate because of his age, and yeah. that made it incredibly difficult. So and Barcelona then, have done the Barcelona same thing done that with, with Griezmann, with Pjanic, Pjanic, Griezmann. Mm. Definitely, and I think this all starts as well. So you need the president probably replaced, and then yeah. you need the right coach. And is Koeman the right coach? Probably not. Can going you, by how. You, yeah, I was treated. The, I was treated the, the, the players there, considering he said like Suarez, you're not my plans. You don't treat players like that. You, I remember when, like, for example, when was it when Klopp came into Liverpool when Car- I think Carragher and Gerrard were leaving at that, at that time. They left amicably. It was all very nice. It's not been like that at Barcelona when Suarez is leaving, or well, he seems to be leaving, or. Vidal will be leaving or Pico let's say believing. Koeman has been very ruthless in that approach and I don't think he's suited to the club because of that in that he is very very ruthless and is he a yeah. top level manager as well if he couldn't hack it at Everton well, can he yeah, do it at Southampton. Southampton he's good at Southampton I guess but if he couldn't hack it well he did it's well a big old jump though isn't it it's a big jump from Everton to hmm. to Barcelona Mm. That's why he I think, might surprise us. He might surprise mm. us, but yeah, I don't know. Do you not think I, Xavi would be better though? I think Xavi think would like, be best, just like with how Frank Lampard's been running the the, mm. the with Chelsea. You know, he knows how the club works. He knows how the board works. He loves the club. I think they Frank Lampard is Chelsea through and through. Just like Xavi goes back to Barcelona, he'll know how the board works. He'll know how the club works, and he loves Barcelona. He'll want. He'll, you know, he'll love working for Barcelona. He'll mm. strive to make them just, you know, bring them back to their glory days. I think Xavi would be the perfect fit for Barcelona, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I guess, he's got some managerial experience in Qatar. 
but it just depends whether he's exactly the right fit in terms of as a manager. Is he obviously has the experience in terms of the club? But is he the right fit in terms of an actual manager? Does he have managerial traits which are needed? Like you see Lampard, I think it was obvious to to everyone that Lampard's going to be a great manager because he has those traits straight away. You can see it. It's interesting to see like the other day in that Spurs documentary that they brought up. Well, I think Ericsson brought it up to Mourinho. It's like, how's what's, Mourinho, what's Lampard like as a guy? And Mourinho was like, amazing, best professional he's ever worked with. And mm. that says a lot. So it makes you think, okay, he's obviously going to be a good manager if he, he's literally the best professional there is. He knows the standards to reach that top level. And Zolt is a very clever guy. He's got degrees. I know Xavi is very clever and has a successful career, but it just depends whether he has the traits to be a manager as well. But again... He, they need players, they need people like Xavi involved in the club again. They need, like you said, Abidal, Xavi, Trio, those kind of people leading that club. Iniesta. Directing, yeah, directing them in the right direction because they love the club and they know how to take the club in the right direction. Go back to those amazing traits they used to have with their academy. Go back to their philosophy. Look what successful clubs do. They, they make sure people who love the club, people who understand the club are at the centre point. I'm going back to that example of Chelsea again because they brought Czech back as the is he technical director, isn't he? Uh, he's yeah. the perfect person for that. Perfect person that, and then we talked before about letting legends go. Look what happened with Czech and Chelsea. Let Czech go to Arsenal to get the yeah. playing time he wanted at the end of his career. Left on great terms, and that's meant their relationships stayed amazing. And that's why he's come back. Mm. And that's why it's and even like Lampard. Lampard went to City. Okay. But he didn't leave unnecessarily bad terms. No. And Lampard's one of Chelsea's, if not Chelsea's greatest player. One of Chelsea's greatest players. Definitely in top three. And you look at that, look at that relationship. You would think on paper, him going to City, okay, that's going to be, that's awful for Chelsea. An awful move for their long-term relationship. The way it happened, it wasn't. How it happened, it wasn't an, an awful thing because they both left on good terms. And that's what should have happened with Messi. I, I can't, I just can't remember an example like this before where players literally not been able to leave, where he's done something. I can't think of an example where but they've sort of held him almost like, taken him as prisoner. I, I can't think of this. No, I can't think of a situation like this, Finch. Is, I really yeah. can't. For, and for this to be like the only sort of one we can think of, and it is Lionel Messi, you know, the greatest player of all time is, it's crazy, absolutely crazy that they've done this. Really, really crazy. What Something that they'll never, you know, Lionel Messi will never let them live it down. Never. They'll always have that sort of bad taste in their mouth of the summer of 2020. Hmm. Well, it's going to be the biggest transfer saga of all time, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. Definitely have to be. Which is no surprise given Messi's status. And I think it's more to do with no one expected Messi to ever move as well. That's why it's been so crazy. Like yeah. the greatest always, player. What would be a one man, one man club? Mm. Yeah. I guess that we only spoke about too fair. What if Messi does move, what it can do for him? So there's still I was a, I've always thought Messi and Alan the best two players. I know I mm-hmm. Wasn't I was a bit hesitant to put Messi ahead of Ronaldo, Ronaldo ahead of Messi until recently. Well, put Messi way ahead, but that yeah. going to another league, going to the Premier League, and performing that league that would do wonders for any of the doubters concerning like Messi being the best player of all time and certainly better than Ronaldo. If he performs in the Premier League and outperforms what Ronaldo did at when Ronaldo was younger, then few people could argue about Messi's position. As a great server player. Oh, definitely. They have to. They they have to finch. It's the only thing really signaling them out. They always say, "Oh, Ronaldo's greater because he, you know he's done it elsewhere." But I still think Messi is the greatest of all time because of what he's done in Champions League to other clubs. He's just absolutely destroyed them. So I feel like mm. he could stick it in the Premier League. Yeah, and we'll find. We might finally get to see if he can do it on a rainy night. Rainy Tuesday night. <laughs> oh, the the myth. Finally, get an answer. Hmm. But yeah, I still have hope that he will come to the Premier League. But 
is an absolute mess in Barcelona. Who knows what's going to happen there? It, I've I've never seen a top club being. I know United were in a bit of a mess, but they were nothing like this. No, never. No, nothing. Nothing this bad. Like people threw. I don't, I'm not even sure there was like a big that big of a breakdown at United after Cristiano Ronaldo left. Because they had sort of, mm. you know, they had Wayne Rooney. They still had um, Berbatov there. You know, they still had these these great players at the club who could sort of keep the club moving on. As said, so Alex Ferguson, with Barcelona, you haven't... Who have you got other than Lionel Messi there? When you mm. think down to it, what other incredible world-class player have you got at Barcelona other than Lionel Messi? Mm. Is, it, is it just... There's been too much short-term planning at Barcelona in their recruitment. Yeah, that, way too that much. hole has been left in terms of when Messi leaves. There's a huge hole there. They're signing short-term players like Brathwaite. Like, why the hell are they signing him? They shouldn't that need is to sign a really player like that. Transfer. As, they shouldn't need a player to sign a player like that. And they, you're, look what Real Madrid did. This. They didn't do it perfectly, but they made sure the hole for Ronaldo wasn't huge. I know Ronaldo probably wasn't as important to the team because he became just an out-and-out goal scorer and it's easier to replace that kind of player compared to Messi where the ball flows to Messi for almost everything in an attack. But they prepared for that by signing a lot of young attacking midfielders and strikers. They had, obviously, you still had Benzema there. They signed Hazard. They had young players like Rodrigo, Vinicius, ready to come in. They still had Bale, although that's another saga, Bale, but they still had Bale. So they had a lot of players still there. Still had Isco, still had Asensio. So they had a lot of mm-hmm. players there who could collectively fill the gap for Ronaldo. But Step up. Barcelona, do they, do they have that? They have Griezmann, who hasn't performed well. Suarez looks like he's going to go. So that's the big one, like when yeah. Ronaldo left. Madrid, Benzema was there. Suarez mm-hmm. doesn't seem like he's going to be there at Barcelona, which I think is a huge loss as well. Yeah, massive loss. As far as a lot of goals they're getting rid of. Hmm. A lot of goals. Hmm. When you look at that, that front three: Neymar, Suarez, Messi. Imagine they won't have any of that. What what's their front three going to be? Griezmann, Ansu. Griezmann, Ansu, and Dembele with Coutinho behind, or Pjanic behind. Hmm. I mean, honestly, if Messi does go, something like that could work. It could take. You know, something like Messi gone for Griezmann to really step up. Because just like Neymar, I thought like Neymar, it's a tough one, so I'm not too sure how much Neymar's improved since getting out of Messi's shadow. I think he's now sort of become his own player. He's not reliant on Messi. Whereas I feel like a lot of the Barcelona players are reliant on Messi just because they haven't, they haven't got to perform as well as they were do for their other clubs. Because they've got Lionel Messi there who just bail them out all the time. But with no Messi there, I thought they're going to have to step up. You know, they're going to have to come out of out of you know the shadow of Messi and perform to to the level that they should be performing at the world class level that they once were at. So it could be a good thing for them players, but not for Barcelona as a whole. I don't believe. Hmm. Well, yeah, I think the problem there being this, there might be a couple of players who benefit but overall. Yeah, they haven't made the right recruitment. No, Messi it'll benefit go. a few players, but it won't benefit the whole team. No, it, yeah, not at because all. Because how can you, you can't replace that? You can't replace that skill that Messi had. You can't. Mm-hmm. You got to do like United when Ronaldo left, they collectively filled that hole. It wasn't Valencia came in as the right mid going to that position Ronaldo was in, but it wasn't him who replaced Ronaldo's influence. It was a collective effort, and I think it was more. They did, yeah, Rooney they changed the whole setup. Up. Rooney stepped up to Ritmore as the main man that next year. And got the goals, and I think they won the league still. And they got no, they got to the Champions League final as well that next year. Yeah. But that was because Rooney stepped up. So and as a team, they stepped up. It wasn't because Valencia replacing him. And that's that's what Barcelona need, but they just don't have the players to do that because their recruitment hasn't been good enough at all. That players like Braff White is just not good enough. Players like before crazy transfers, yeah, Absolutely stupid ones. Mm. And now they've left with players like Coutinho, who's been on loan for a year. Well, yeah. he probably has to stay now because no team's going to want to pay money for him. So it is, it is yeah. a very tough one. But yeah, 
with Messi, it seems like he's going to stay at Barcelona for another year. This saga is going to continue. It's to be continued. We'll see yeah. what's going to happen. With him. More things are going to come out as the weeks go along. But the bigger, well, the topic which is getting ignored is the cause of all of this at Barcelona. And I think that's the key talking point of this, this podcast coming out of it in terms of what Barcelona should do in going yep. back to their philosophy, having targeted recruitment for that and having the right people there with the right manager, with the right president, with the right recruitment team to make Barcelona great again. It's not a short-term project. This is going to take not. time. It's really not. So, yeah, if, you, what, if you're listening tell. to this, Xavi, Abidal, Pio, go back. Iniesta. Yeah. David Villa, come back. David Villa, oh, what a player. And on, on that note, I reckon we can complete the Messi Saga podcast part one. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more parts of this. Um, yeah, to be continued. To 